Tesla's 2021 earnings report has almost certainly triggered an accelerated demise of the internal combustion engine. And this time, it's not the market share or the growth that's going to be the subject matter of every auto manufacturer's board meetings. Certainly, they are all paying attention, even if GM still refuses to acknowledge Tesla's existence. One million vehicles per annum is a serious number, and this is no longer a newcomer in their space. As obvious and attractive as the growth of the EV market is, I believe there is a much simpler reason that EVs will kill the internal combustion engine. And it has to do with a single metric that can be found in Tesla's earnings report. Tesla is reporting automotive gross margins of 30%, or if you prefer, around 28.6% if we strip out the regulatory credits. Now, for an auto manufacturer, this is out the park. General Motors hasn't been able to get above 11% gross margin since 2018, when it was able to eke out a mere 14%. Ford crashed to 2% gross margin in 2020, falling from 6% the year before, which in turn was a fall from the glory days of 8% gross margin in 2018. Toyota are the reigning kings of production efficiency and are faring a bit better, with 17% gross margin in 2021, which is in line with their average gross margin before the pandemic. Mazda has always been the shining star in the auto world for profitability and have a gross margin currently of 21%, but they were able to get this number up to about 24% before the pandemic. VW in the pre-pandemic heyday was able to make cars for around 19% gross margin, Stellantis hovered around the 15% range, and BMW have also been able to keep the metric around the 20% range. I could continue, but the pattern is pretty clear. Tesla has introduced a new benchmark for profitability. More importantly, Tesla is demonstrating margin expansion. And where there is more money to be made, I can almost guarantee that the boards of every auto manufacturer out there are being peppered with questions as to why they don't have more EVs in production and why the product mix still leans towards the far less profitable internal combustion engine. So are EVs more profitable? Or is Tesla just able to drive up the price due to current demand? This graph gives an indication of the cost of production for Tesla's vehicles. It is a simple calculation. I take the cost of goods sold and divide by the number of vehicles produced. It's a bit crude because it doesn't take the product mix into consideration, but the trend is so noticeable that I think we can safely say that volume production of EVs is reducing the build cost, even in an inflationary environment. A lot has already been said about Tesla's approach to production, but I do believe that EVs in general, once you get over the economies of scale, are cheaper to make but only if you take production efficiency into consideration in your design. About the only common ground here is that they have four wheels, a chassis, leather seats, and a steering wheel, although even the steering wheel is being challenged. EVs are just that much simpler in their design. Reportedly, Tesla's Model Y has one-third of the parts found in a traditional car. That means a lot. They can build faster, and their quality assurance processes are easier and you can control a lot more of the car with software. I could also talk about the Gigapress introduction, but since we don't really have a comparative production line of the same or similar volume, we can't really determine its effectiveness. And besides, I wanted to draw comparison between the vehicles themselves and not the production techniques. Now, obviously, Tesla's margins can also be attributed to the increased average sales price of their vehicles. I don't know how this supports the argument that internal combustion engines still have legs, but let's roll this one out of it. We know with certainty that Tesla has been steadily bumping up its prices. But Tesla has one other major advantage, a direct-to-consumer business model. Most traditional auto manufacturers use a franchise dealership model, although direct-to-consumer has been gaining traction in Europe. So Tesla has the benefit of extra margin that Ford, GM, Toyota, and all the others are passing on to their dealerships. And by all accounts, it's substantial. Now, I have a theory that EVs lend themselves more to direct-to-consumer, and that such an approach is much harder with their more complex counterparts. There are a lot of moving parts in an internal combustion engine, and there are an enormous amount of permutations leading up to the end product configuration. You have diesel engines, petrol engines, fuel injection, all-wheel drive, real-wheel drive. 
automatic versus manual, different engine sizes, vehicles built for torque versus vehicles built for speed, acceleration versus fuel economy, emissions controls, different trims used to further diversify, and so on and so forth. With that sort of a mix, you need a frontline salesperson to help a buyer through the decision-making process. This is an enormous capital expense after all. EVs dramatically simplify all of this. Pretty much the same way Apple simplified the personal computing market with the MacBook. A lot of the complexity around choices is now removed and online sales are much easier to accommodate. It does of course come with one major downside and that is that direct consumer is much harder to implement after sales support services. You miss the personal touch that a dealer network can convey. But I think even here, you can get some feeling for how important this is based on reported warranty claims from Tesla's filings versus Ford. Like all manufacturers, both have to make provision in their cost of sale for warranty, and then both are reporting actual claims on the warranty provision. I've calculated that Ford spends around 4% of their top line sales on warranty claims, while Tesla is spending around 1%. Now granted, this observation is a bit thin. And really, I should look a bit deeper into the history across all vehicle manufacturers. And we really should wait a couple more years to calculate Tesla's average at volume production. But I suspect we will continue to see a trend here. The implication is that the personal touch of a dealer network is therefore not as important. Lastly, we can't simply ignore the regulatory credit issue. Tesla really should stop including this number in its margin calculations. It is sneaky, in my opinion. And most analysts hate this interpretation. The feeling is that it is not sustainable. As more and more auto manufacturers transition away from the internal combustion engine, this number will eventually disappear altogether. Now, it might not be relevant to Tesla's future, but it is absolutely relevant to an internal combustion engine product line. Emissions controls are not going to simply disappear. They are getting more and more onerous. Both Ford and GM mention it in their filings. And the cost of maintaining a carbon neutral position are continuously increasing, as are the design criteria for their cars. In conclusion, I think auto manufacturer CEOs are really feeling the heat right now from their shareholders. No one can possibly stand and defend production of a product that is facing margin compression when you have a competitor that has demonstrated margins that are at least double what you're achieving, and more importantly, margins that are expanding. And this is why I believe the internal combustion engine is going to face an accelerated decline. It is simply not as profitable to make them. Thank you so much for listening. I recommend this video here if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on exactly how hard it is going to be for an auto manufacturer to catch up to Tesla. And in this video here, I share my thoughts on the incredible danger GM is facing right now.